Okay, so in today's webinar, um, I just want to quickly go over how I use the TA page scans for finding some of the best day trading and swing trading um, opportunities, uh, specifically on a technical basis. So this page was created uh, about 10 years ago, and essentially it's just a computerized scan that is uh, picking out specific patterns and criteria on charts. Um, that I have found to be uh, very useful over the years. Um, there's nothing too complex here. It's uh, your typical textbook technical analysis patterns from pullbacks to breakouts to um, you know uh, Japanese candlesticks, dojis, inside days, etc. Um, but I just want to show how uh, on a daily basis or nightly basis how I go through these charts and examples to find the best opportunities. Um, so the first thing that I usually do would be go right down to the bottom of the page and uh, I look at this signal right here and this is my own proprietary signal I came up with um, based upon weekly and daily momentum um, signals as well as uh, the position of the SPY and it tells me uh, whether there is a uh, whether the current momentum in the broader market based on the SPY um, whether the market momentum is up uh, flat or down and this kind of just gives me a broad sense of uh, which what my bias should be leaning into the market. Um, I don't always stick to it. You know, sometimes I buy weakness in an oversold market, but uh, it just kind of gives me this broad sense of what the uh, general market is doing. Currently, right now, we see it's on a yellow signal, neutral and flat, um, which kind of makes perfect sense because if we look at this chart of the SPY, you can see that the it's sitting right in this multi-month range below its highs. Um, below its lows here at support level and hence we're going to have this yellow signal, this yellow momentum signal, which kind of means we have to uh, pick and choose whether we want to have a long bias or short bias for the day and depending on how different stocks are set up. Um, so this is how I go through the uh, scans on a nightly basis and again you can find this, uh, if you're not on the email list, you can find this under investing and trading under the TA page scans. You just click there and it would upload um, the table each night. So to show how quickly I can go through this, uh, we have our pullback long candidates first. So if I have a bullish bias for the next day, I'm just going to start going through these charts and I can see that AMBA has a nice little pullback long and this is the, you're going to see these patterns repeat themselves over and over and over again. So it's been an uptrend here the last uh, two, three weeks and you have a nice little four or five day pullback above the 20 period moving average. Uh, so that's a stock that I would keep on the radar, maybe set an alert for, or place a stop uh, a stop order to buy above the previous day's high. Um, again, uh, CCI, nice little chart pattern right here, broke out, five-day pullback. Um, kind of want to look for a buy there. You, you know, I'm also going to pay attention next morning to see if there's any sort of headlines or news uh, in these names as well, which might propel them higher. Um, DWTI, I believe, is a... Uh, um, a uh, energy oil, uh, yeah, it's a three times energy uh, uh, ETF. So again, you see the nice uptrends in effect, and you can see a uh, nice pullback there for a good trading opportunity. Uh, ERY, I believe, is also another energy ETF. Uh, SCO is the crude oil uh, weighted ETF as well. Again, you should see a pattern here, uh, nice uptrend in effect, a little pullback above the 20 period moving average. Um, SanDisk, again, big uptrend right here, five-day, four-day pullback, setting up a potential uh, trading opportunity if it can clear out of this pattern here, uh, I'd say above like $61, uh, or the 50-day moving average would be worth a closer look the next few days. Uh, Teva, uh, big gap up, three, four-day pullback, a little overextended, you know, based upon the gap up. But a stock that's probably worthy of watching as it comes into uh, uh, support, maybe at the gap, or if it comes into this area of the 20-day moving average, uh, you know, rising up to meet price around the 66, 67 dollar area. Um, you can also watch it if it just kind of turns and starts reversing back up uh, of 70. Uh, Zotus again, um, there was this momentum uptrend in effect here, and you see oh, there was a three, four, or five-day pullback. And price is now starting to recover back above its 50-day, back above this pullback pattern. Um, that's really it, um, you know, for the longs. And then I'm now I'm going to just kind of go to the short side. Um, you know, one thing I do want to point out is as the more names that I see 
from a particular sector or group, uh, that's also going to be a significant factor as well that I want to take note of. Um, so looking at shallow pullback shorts, I see there's more of them setting up than there were longs. So it tells me right off the bat that the market probably could be in some sort of uh, overbought state. Um, if I look at the specific names, uh, there's an energy stock, there is an energy stock, an energy stock, an energy stock, energy, um, energy, gold. Um, there's maybe a uh, healthcare, healthcare, a semiconductor, mid-cap semiconductor, uh, energy, 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 uh, so you, energy. So there's definitely an energy bias here that, um, you know, if we just, without even looking at that, you can just say the XLE, uh, which is the energy ETF. See, it's been in this massive downtrend, and it had this uh, three-day rally going into today, um, which kind of set it up for a pullback uh, within its context of its downtrend. So potentially going into today, we were going to look at some of these energy names as shorts, and it seems like that's coming to fruition. Um, but again, last night, I would have been looking at some of these names, energy specifically. Uh, APC would have been a uh, decent short this short. Um, CRZO. Uh, didn't trigger, but again, the pattern is still there. So even going into going into um, next week, you know, I kind of see this resistance level is here at 40. Maybe it comes back down below these lows for a shorting opportunity uh, as August gets underway. EOG downtrend in effect. Again, patterns here. There's the bear flag. Uh, ERX is the ETF. Again, you could have uh, potentially taken a short in that today, as it seems like some of these names got hit. Uh, Fang is another one. HP. Uh, it's starting to become a little weak here. Um, you know, again, major downtrend in effect right there. And here is your bear flag, and you take the short underneath uh, yesterday's low. Um, let's see, uh, what was it? It's PPG didn't trigger. P, P, uh, PXD uh, again, nice opportunity here today. Major downtrend in effect below the 20-day moving average, and triggered below prior day's low. Um, XCC would be another one, and uh, triggered, but still kind of struggling with resistance um, right around here at the 20-day moving average. Um, so that, again, that's just a quick uh, look at how these opportunities I would take. Probably wouldn't look at too many of the other ones. Um, Z I know is uh, the um, real estate online stock, Zillow real estate online stock. So again, just look through there. Bear flag didn't really trigger yet, but it is struggling around this period. This uh, 20 period moving average, so uh, potentially maybe a short into next week. Next trade here is the uh, liquid momentum pullbacks. So liquid momentum is LQDXX on our site. That's the tickers that we use to track these top 50 stocks that we consider to be the leading relative strength stocks in the market. Um, and so what the scan does specifically is since their relative strength is so strong, um, I'm really interested in the stocks that have um, uh, their RSI is trading around the midpoint of their range. Um, so a good example of that, if we look at these, would be uh, ALNY. Again, this is a, uh, a leading stock, a pharmaceutical stock, and you can see that it's kind of pulled back into the middle of um, its current trading range. So it's maybe also at the 50-day moving averages and the 20-day moving averages. So, so this is going to be a name that I'm going to keep on the radar for a potential uh, lift out of here into early August. Um, Lexian Pharmaceuticals, I believe they just had earnings uh, yesterday, but again, it's one of these stocks that are just sitting around the 20-day moving average. It's a leader uh, on our list, and um, it kind of just sitting around mid-range right now, potentially setting up for another opportunity. Um, you're not going to really see, um, maybe not get a buy signal right away on these, because sometimes they're just sitting mid-range, um, which is a nice thing, because it's consolidating. Um, and since they are leading stocks, you're hoping to get some sort of lift or uh, continuation of a new leg higher uh, out of these names. BMRN uh, is a really nice name. So you have a biotech, pharmaceutical name, uh, strong sector, strong group. It's a leading stock based upon the relative strength. Uh, finding support along the 20-day moving averages is always nice, uh, along with this other support level here around 142, um, and starting to show relative strength lifting out of this pattern. It's probably worth a closer look. Uh, Celgene, another nice uh, leading biotech name. Found support here around its gap, 20-day uh, moving average, kind of pulled back, you know, worth a closer look. Uh, data, this stock, um, you know, uh, it's probably going to come off the focus list for uh, the upcoming week because it got hit so hard on earnings and it's trading below its 50-day moving average. 
Um, but the system, again, it's a computerized system, so it did pick up the um, uh, the RSI uh, below 50 on this leading name. Um, for what it's worth, there is seems to be a gap back here in May that seems to have uh, attracted some bids when the price broke down below 100. And I believe we did have that on our um, website under the trading service or uh, one of the technical comments two days ago. Definitely picked up that gap support. Um, Again, LL, you know, just kind of look at that. It's in mid-range, holding in there okay. And now I see two refiners, MPC, uh, real nice chart here, uh, coming down, 50-day moving average, um, trying to lift. Um, could be worth a closer look. Have to check when earnings are out. TSO probably has a similar chart. Uh, nice multi-day, multi-week, multi-day, two-week pullback, holding support around the 20-day moving average. Um, you know, again, it's a leading stock. Real strong momentum, pull back, took a rest for two weeks. Uh, RSI uh, 14 is mid-range. Could be worth a try here. That's a closer look. Um, power up. So power up and power down are stocks that are basically uh, running for three days or more in one particular direction, either up or down. Um, if I see a lot of power ups, I'm going to know the market has been strong, particularly in this particular sector. If, they, if there's a correlation between the names here, um, power down has been none the last three days uh, according to the database um, that I'm using here, which is um, uh, stocks have to be trading over a million shares and they have to have an average daily range greater than one is the database that I use for all the TA scans. So um, it could kind of tell me that the markets, you know, may be due for some sort of pause uh, just because there's been this uh, three-day run-up um, favorite as opposed to a three-day uh, down, um, three-day down. Um, just going to look, look at some of these names here. We got uh, ALK, which is an airline. Um, three day run up. Nothing too spectacular here, but it does tell you that, you know, um, there were some buyers there three days in a row. AMP looks like it's coming off the lows, resistance at the 50 day. You know, just kind of passing through these. I don't see anything particularly that stands out as a good trade. Um, CE, maybe a short candidate, uh, you know, down momentum below the 50, below the 20. Nice recovery here, but uh, you know, technically it looks weak here in July, and it could just start to roll over again as this resistance area comes in play around 66. Um, again, another thing you want to keep track of on the TA scans is if you see a uh, a setup, if you see a name show up on um, multiple scans. Um, I'm wondering if CE was on the uh, pullback, shallow pullback uh, shorts. It's not. Uh, probably because it didn't fit the shallow criteria. Again, I'm looking for more of a uh, shallow downtrend. This is a, you know going from 62 to 66 uh, is a pretty significant range here. Uh, but it, nonetheless, it's a decent uh, potential short. Maybe you want to be looking at if you feel like the market's going to roll over into um, early uh, August. Um, if we go through a few more real quick, uh, let's see where was I. Uh, CXO, so that's interesting because that was actually a uh, uh, pullback short candidate, so that's going to be one that I would take note of. Uh, JBHT uh, to transport, you know, coming into resistance at the 50-day moving average. MDY is interesting because that's the uh, mid-cap um, ETF, so you can kind of see that that's been running over three days in a row, maybe potentially signaling an overbought um, indication amongst mid-caps. Uh, MNST, really strong stock right here. It's going to be a leader. Um, so at the very least, I want to be looking at this one, um, you know, on some sort of mild pullback or if it comes back into the 20-day uh, moving average over the next few weeks. I want to keep that on the radar. Um, you know, and this is what I do. You just kind of go through the charts here. QLD is the um, uh, NASDAQ ETF. So again, it's been up for three days in a row. Maybe it needs a break here, uh, but overall pretty strong. Solar City, I believe, uh, looks strong. Nice breakout. Uh, want to keep on the radar for a pullback. Uh, SKX Skechers had earnings, so you know that's going to be strong one to watch. Uh, Seagate kind of struggling there at the 50-day moving average. Uh, TQQQ is another uh, NASDAQ ETF. Under Armour, real strong. I want to keep uh, track of that one on any sort of pullback um, after a three-day run-up. Real nice stuff. Maybe around 98 areas worth a closer look or if it pulls back uh, further into 94 or uh, with the 20-day moving average catching up to it. Uh, VMware, WDC, XON, uh, real strong stock right here. Uh, this is actually, I believe a couple days ago, this was on the three-day down 
um, move. It was also on a pullback long uh, uh, setup, which is real nice because you had this nice uptrend here in July, uh, three day down, uh, pullback long, shallow pullback long setup, and just kind of took off uh, earlier this week for a nice gain. Um, let's see, so next scan pull power down. You just kind of went over that. Inside days are kind of self explanatory, but at the very least, I want to just take a glance at them. Um, and just see which names are pausing in and where they are in their context of their uptrend. So again, right off the bat, I'm noticing again a lot of energy names here: ERX, EOG, APC. A lot of these are on the pullback short candidates. Um, so I'm kind of just putting a whole theme together here, saying that the energy stocks are in downtrends. They're setting up their shorts, and they had a lot of inside days yesterday, uh, potentially set, giving me shorting opportunities in them, um, you know, today or going into next week. Um, also, the, you know, just because it is a potential uh, um, candidate, you know, if energy stocks become popular again coming into the beginning of August, you know, this might be a great group to focus on more of a squeeze uh, above these levels as well. So again, there's opportunities uh, setting up here uh, among amongst energy stocks in particular, from what I'm noticing so far. Um, and you know, again, inside days are kind of self-explanatory. This Wubba just showed up here. And you can see it's a real narrow range right here. Um, it's finding support right here around the $59, $60 area. Um, you know, could be a potential trade setup as a uh, new month comes underway. Um, I have no particular bias, long or short, right here, but I'm just going to keep it on the radar and potential breakout higher or a breakdown lower um, for an opportunity. Uh, NOC, uh, I know there was a nice earnings uh, breakout here, so that's a nice one. You know, and I'm just kind of glancing through the names quick. Uh, you don't have to go through all of them, um, but you can see how quickly I'm going through the process just to try to get a feel for it. Uh, but UNP and KSU are there, so I know those are railroad stocks that um, recently had some strong moves. Um, again, trying to find some sort of theme that's going on here. Uh, inside week. Now, if you're more of a swing trader, um, I do actually provide the inside weeks for these stocks. Um, so... For inside weeks, they're generally viewed as a pause in the current momentum. Um, so you can see, last as of last week, it was an inside week for this really strong uh, pharmaceutical stock. So maybe it's a stock you want to keep on the radar. Um, not necessarily short because it's so strong, um, but it, it did set up nice when it kind of took out uh, last week's low and then reversed. Um, and you can see it's kind of holding support around the 20-day moving average. If you're a swing trader, I would definitely recommend looking at some of these um, these weekly setups, uh, particularly uh, in names like this. Uh, Kite is another good example. So um, Kite, we actually posted on the site today. Um, just ignore these this data, but um, you can see it kind of broke out above um, re multi-month resistance here two weeks ago. Had this inside pullback day uh, week last week. Um, and if we just kind of look at it you can s and put a range on last week's uh, activity and then go to a daily chart, you can see that it came, pulled back, took out last week's low on Monday, held 20-day moving average, and staged a strong reversal. Uh, really strong stock uh, in, here in July. Uh, actually, the last two months, I'd say, it's a really nice uptrend in effect. Um, again, it, it, multiple tests of the 20-period moving average, uh, in which price responded really well to. And uh, today, you kind of have this lift out of a two-week pullback. Um, so definitely to keep it on the radar, um, as it looks like this multi-month Resistance around 75 has potential to move higher. Uh, I believe earnings are uh, in next week or in two weeks and here in August. So it's definitely one to keep on the radar for a breakout over 25. Um, and that's basically how uh, these are going to set up um, for the inside weeks. Um, again, uh, VRTX is a setup. A little bit uh, too sloppy for my taste, but um, you know this weekly range, you can see resistance is here, 135. Really kind of struggling the last few months to get break away from uh, 125, 130, um, but it is new high ground right above there, so maybe it's worth a closer look as it tries to um, accelerate and lift out of uh, this uh, multi-month uh, consolidation uh, over 135, 136. Um, so hopefully you get the gist there. Um, I'd go through some of those names as well um, and set alerts for them or set uh, some stop loss orders. Uh, a Doji day for those of you who are not familiar with the pattern Doji. Um, it's basically when the open and the close are very close together. Uh, um, sometimes um, you can see, for example, uh, so the first example 
it was Apple that showed up here. And the open and the close have been very tight, very close um, together the last few days. And essentially, that means that there's a struggle um, you know, for control between buyers and sellers. If the close is open up, uh, if the close is well above the open, you're going to get a day like this, um, you know, white uh, bar where it's really strong. Um, if it's the close is below the open, you're going to get a down day like this, telling you sellers are in control. Um, the Doji day kind of tells you more of a neutral setting, um, almost like a battle that's going on, and it's significant because in um, in context of where it's come from. You can use it as a pause or a potential reversal. And in this case right here, I would say that um, it's actually it was a pause in the current downward momentum, and now you can see it's breaking below support. So now it's a continuation. Uh, in some cases, you might see it as a potential reversal. Um, APA energy stock um, again, two tight ranges right here. Is this a pause in the bigger picture downtrend that remains to be seen? Um, but it can also be a squeeze that leads higher, maybe uh, through 47, back up to the 20-day moving averages for a trade. Just something to keep on the radar. Um, BA, not too much action there. Uh, BABA, nice example of a, uh, you know, took a pause right here with the doji. Um, context is down based upon that gap. And then it, it broke below this key support level for a potential shorting opportunity. Um, cyber, nice good example here, pullback. Um, I definitely like the stock. You can see I marked it. Uh, earnings are coming up August 11th. Uh, gap support right here. Nice doji pattern right there. Um, could have taken a nice solid entry as it started to lift over $59, uh, possibly $60 today um, uh, as it continues to hold support here. So again, this is uh, hopefully kind of seeing a pattern here. Um, FireEye had earnings, so uh, again, I try to stay away from earnings. Doesn't really tell you too much. Nike, strong uptrend. Doji at the high tells you it's kind of getting tired. Another Doji seems to be developing today right now. Um, see over here, there were two Dojis in a row, and that kind of led to a two-day pullback. So maybe if you're looking to short stocks off their high, um, you want to look for next week to see maybe prices start to uh, pull back in a little bit more and Nike off the highs. Um, now you're kind of hopefully getting a gist of what the, these patterns are revealing to you. Doji week. Uh, again, real similar to the inside week pattern. And if you're a swing trader, you want to pay attention to this. Uh, it says that the stocks closed on a weekly basis, um, almost neutral. So if you look at INTU, you could see that it closed near its highs uh, a week ago on a weekly basis uh, after, a, after a two week run up. And uh, from a uh, trading perspective, perhaps you want to go short below that breakdown. Um, so you could have took the short earlier this week below 106 for almost a two and a half uh, point drop um, for a trade. Um, let's see, Nike actually looks like it's ha had a uh, weekly. Uh, where did my weekly activity go? Um, had a weekly Doji pattern in effect um, coming into this week. So after a strong run up. It was some sort of uh, pause there where price consolidated uh, a week ago off the highs. And there's two ways to play this. Um, again, you can either go short below the prior week's low, which happened on Monday. Um, so there was a nice little trade that happened there. Uh, however, it did find support right along the rising 20-day moving average, along the support level right here, um, and then it reversed. And that is also a nice setup because I'm pretty sure this looks like a uh, three-day down setup and a pullback long setup as well. Uh, and you have a nice strong uptrend, one, two, three, uh, and then a reversed higher. So again, I've kind of just taken all these uh, patterns into play on these stronger names. Um, overbought, oversold. <clears throat> um, let's get this list up higher. It's pretty much exactly what it says it is. Uh, it's compared to where it's been over the last five days range. These stocks are considered to be uh, overbought, oversold. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you know. The stock is basically uh, viewed as overbought. I would not suggest uh, just blindly shorting these stocks just because it's showing up overbought where it's been the last five days. Uh, lots of times, if you notice, this is actually a sign of strength, uh, this overbought signals. It's basically really um, strong, and what tends to be strong gets continuously stronger. So overbought, um, a lot of the times you're going to see these names just slip into a consolidation or a mild pullback. Um, 
and I would definitely keep him on the radar to um, set up maybe some sort of bull flag. A lot of times these overbought names will uh, show up on the pullback long scans, um, maybe after three or four days of consolidating or pulling back, forming a bull flag pattern, and you're going to want to get long these names. Um, so just kind of giving you a heads up of potential names that have really seen a lot of um, um, strength the last few days. Kind of similar to the power up scan, um, but where the power up scan is only three days, this is more about uh, this is more of a name. This is more of a scan that uh, basis is off of the previous five day range. Um, so again, these are names that you just kind of want to take note of um, if their overall strength in the market um, and see if there's some sort of setups developing. Real similar stuff to the uh, oversold stocks that you can see here. Um, I'll move this up a little bit. The data, uh, again, gap down, so it's definitely a weaker name. Potential uh, pullbacks would be pullbacks or bounces could be setting up shorts. ESPR really oversold here. Um, longer term, it looked like there, I believe there was a support level right here around 60. Um, that was setting up, yeah. So you can go back to February and March. See, there's a 60 support level that um, is, this has been on the oversold list for the last two days. Um, but you could have picked it up yesterday as a as a probe 60 for a quick little uh, four or five dollar bounce. Um, let's see uh, SFM. You can see gap down, real weak stock. Whole Foods showed up. Um, that gap down in relationship to earnings. Uh, it's a pretty weak stock. Potential bounce here could happen, but overall um, it's a weak name. Uh, Yelp, another name that gapped down on earnings, but you could see it had a really nice, uh, making a really nice recovery here. Um, this is a stock that actually went long, um, a little bit, bit, maybe about an hour after earnings happened, um, just because it's overall a uh, really weak downtrend over context. Um, I didn't think there were too many people long this name. Um, the way it's been acting, people probably are getting stopped out, and it's just been a massive downtrend, underperforming for most of the year. Uh, and it seemed like by the just a 25% gap down, seemed like it was getting blown out uh, heavily. Um, so as soon as the initial shorts, uh, as soon as the initial longs got um, sold out of the positions below 25, uh, started scooping some of this up around 24, um, and then closed on it looked like a doji pattern um, on on Wednesday, and then it just started to lift and recover real nicely here for a decent trade of about um, two or three dollars. Um, so hopefully you get a sense of that. Um, wide range breakouts and breakdowns, exactly what it says they are. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but if I just show some charts real quick. Um, massive breakout yesterday here in Baxter, um, obviously right over the 39 level. And this, most of these stocks are based on earnings, but sometimes um, you know when earnings season is not, not around, you know you get to just find nice, really nice patterns. Um, this broke out yesterday on the list. And, Nice continuation today, so maybe it's a stock that you want to start uh, researching. I don't know what CubeSmart does or what industry it's in, but it's definitely a name that uh, has a beautiful chart pattern over the last few months. Um, so it's, I'm going to maybe find out uh, how the fundamentals are. Um, so again, this is kind of a uh, use. This is more as a, uh, a research tool. I wouldn't be chasing these names per se, um, but just to see um, how they're uh, acting. Um, so we have CVC, which is Cablevision, uh, FIS, another strong breakout over uh, nice multi-month resistance here, uh, worth looking into. IVZ, Invesco, mm, gapped up, not too much of a breakout. Um, Kimberly Clark, we all know that one. Paper products, toilet paper, tissues, um, nice multi-month breakout there. Uh, Mondelez, another one, I believe that's the old craft. Um, or, I can't remember the spinoff of Kraft, I believe. Uh, MGM, so we have a nice uh, casinos, maybe potentially reversing up their bottom here. Um, you know, when I see something like MGM, I'm also going to look at um, other names in the group. So here's Win Resorts, even though it's not on the scan. Uh, I'm just going to take a closer look at it because I know it's been in a big downtrend, potentially trying to consolidate and base here the last two months. Uh, so it could be worth a trade. LVS is another one. Uh, underperforming um, for most of this year, but could potentially be um, trying to turn a corner here as the summer comes around. Um, so hopefully you get the gist there. I'm also going to take a look and see if there's any sort of specific industry or sector that uh, I see here, and I, I don't see much of a relationship right now. Um, wide, wide range breakdowns, 
you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a ton of energy stocks just continuously showing up on these on these groups here. Uh, no surprise, uh, along with some um, basic materials and uh, uh, gold stocks. Um, so just kind of told you to kind of avoid them and stay away from them. Uh, tight consolidations, um, again, probably more of a swing trade than an actual day trade here. But overall, this is really kind of looking for uh, multi-week, multi-day ranges setting up here. AMT, kind of just doing nothing in this range. Could be worth a look uh, for the research. AVB, prior to today, was kind of just sitting in this range here. So it got picked up on the scan. Um, you know, just kind of, it's kind of a scan that picks up like nothing, narrow ranging on the week and narrow ranging on the day. Kind of going sideways and then when you get something like this it's something you want to take interest in um, if you've done your research and you like the name um, i'm sorry that was avalon bay uh, so uh but i see bxp was here as well actually it looks like there's a couple of reits right here that i'm looking at um, so maybe reits are something that i want to start looking at maybe the iyr uh, as a whole um, which is the etf is something that now could be um, after a tight consolidation here could be turning a corner here. Um, maybe REITs are going to be popular in August. Who knows? Um, it's something worth looking at uh, over the weekend. Um, you know, trying to get a, a whole feel for this. VNO is another one, uh, Bonado, uh, another REIT. So there's a theme here uh, that REITs were basically in really narrow consolidations, but could be starting to perk up. Um, and that's kind of the way I kind of look at those. Um, the next few uh, scans are 20 day alerts, 50 day alerts, 100 day alerts, 200 day alerts self-explanatory. Uh, there are stocks that are trading real close to those levels. Um, I'm not going to go through them, um, but I will glance at them real quick um, just to see if any of these names have been on scans uh, from above. So uh, again, if there's any energy names sitting at these levels, there are probably a few sitting at the 20 moving averages from what I noticed. Uh, PXD was one of the ones that was pulled back short. Um, XEC was up there. So Zillow uh, was I pulled that chart up as well. Um, so just kind of quickly glancing through the names, so GBHT was a breakout somewhere or, or an overbought name uh, that I might be interested in. Um, so I'll just take a closer look at stuff like that. Uh, same with the 200-day moving averages, 50-day uh, moving averages, 100-day moving averages. Um, now the zippers down below here, this is uh, basically the lower price names that have been attracting strong uptrends um, um, over the last few weeks. And um, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of trading these, um, day trading these, but from a swing trading perspective, um, there are usually some sort of potential opportunities here if you know how to um, time them correctly. So ANTH, uh, this is actually one stock that I have been uh, long. Um, it's been on the zipper scan for quite some time now, probably about uh, a month or so. Um, but you can see why it's a low price name had really, really strong momentum here in early June and um, started showing up on the zipper scan um, as one of these names below $20 that has strong momentum in play. And I believe I started getting along right here on $8 area. Um, I want to say uh, up below $8 or right here on um, early June, early July, excuse me. Um, and then we've had a nice little run up here again. Um, could potentially be setting up for another trade here as this pullback uh, flags develops above the 20-day moving average. Um, so, you know, that's basically uh, what the zipper scan is. You can see, I'll just go through a few more. Um, BLDR Builders is uh, really strong. It's been on this, I think it's been on this list for a while as well. Um, but it had a big gap up, so it had to consolidate it for a few months. And now it looks like it's starting to resume. So that's one to keep on the radar as well. Uh, CARA or CARA Therapeutics. Again, real strong momentum here in July, gapped up, pullback, nice trade trading opportunity here. There's huge volume here um, the other yesterday. Um, so that's a signal tip off right there. 3.2 million shares traded, um, right around $19 and having nice follow through today. So there's something going on there, worth a closer look. Uh, ELNK, really strong momentum, 50 day moving average. Um, not a big fan of this type of pattern, looks a little aggressive. Uh, need to see it start moving above 7, you know, 60, 7, 75 to maybe get interested. Uh, but at least you know where your stop loss is right along the 50-day moving average. Uh, NVAX, again, another name. Uh, it's been on the list for a while here. Really strong momentum. Pulled back to the 20, uh, consolidating with a closer look. Fold, uh, nice strong momentum. Last few weeks. 
um, consolidated, broke out, uh, tried to pull back to the 20, held it, and looks like it's kind of uh, resuming its uptrend here above $17. So hopefully, hopefully you get the uh, gist of what these stocks are, just strong uptrending stocks. Uh, here's, I uh, can't pronounce this name for the life of me, um, XUE. Uh, Zueda, I guess it is, um, just joined our list. Big breakout here. Um, you know, it seems like there's a lot of bids in here. Nothing really setting up. Looks a little overextended for my taste. Um, but just wanted me to keep on the radar, see how it plays out the next few weeks. Uh, it should be on the list for a while. Um, bang for your buck. If you're day trading and you're looking for those high velocity names with a lot of liquidity, um, the scan is updated weekly. And these are just some um, real, just great day trading names. Um, I wouldn't recommend really trading them on a uh, based upon the daily chart um, because uh, they are pretty volatile. Uh, they're going to have a ATR that's probably over two in most cases. Um, but I would definitely look and see, um, uh, look, track these stocks on a 60-minute chart because you're going to find a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, especially if you're day trading or scalping them, just based upon key support levels. Um, and whatnot. So here's GoPro, jumps out of me, Netflix, uh, you know, this has been a nice trade for us as well. Um, you know, solid pullback, held the 20-day moving average, and started to break out over 107, 108 yesterday to jump on board for a trade. Um, the 60-minute chart, uh, can't get a good, uh, let's see if I can get a better perspective here. Um, ignore the moving averages because the stock split, um, so it's going to be thrown off a little bit. Uh, but you can see that the the entry right here on a 60-minute chart was after uh, these three-day um, three-day highs were taken out here, and the price held the 20-day moving average to jump on board for a nice trade. Um, you know, it looks like it's stalling out too, right around the 114 area, which is where prior resistance was. Um, so hopefully you get a good feel for that here. Cyber, you know, I noted that one on one of the Doji scan earlier. Um, so again, Cyber would be a good one. Uh, Win Resorts showing up here again. Um, again, I'm trying to PXD. There's that short candidate, HP. So again, if you're trying to figure out which energy names to go short because of they were in pullback short candidates, um, you want to kind of take a look at the more volatile names, the ones that really have momentum and liquidity behind them. They are worth a closer look. Um, here's two semiconductors that kind of jump out at me, and there's Zillow again, of course. Um, so here's uh, NXPI, I believe that had earnings, uh, AMBA. Um, I'm sorry, AVGO was right next to it. Um, didn't really show up on anything, but again, there's tons of momentum in these names, particularly if you trade them from an intraday chart basis. You can usually identify some sort of a key resistance area that you it needs to either overcome or a support level that you can probably base um, you know take a long off of. So there's just a lot of good opportunities here if you're into those high velocity, uh, high momentum uh, names for intraday trading. Um, so that's what the TH scans page is. Hopefully, uh, I think I just ran around 20, 30 minutes, hopefully. And um, that's what I do on a, on a daily basis, nightly basis. You know, just kind of glance through these as fast as I can, see which names are popular, see what groups are popular that stand out, um, try to give myself an overall bias of whether there's a lot of wide range breakouts or breakdowns. You know, you kind of know if the market's uh, uh, acting weak or strong. Um, and you know, it kind of gives you this overall sense, and then you just kind of look at the charts, see which ones are good, and start doing your, you know, that it, this is like doing your nightly homework. It gives you uh, a starting point to where you should be going, um, and it works really well. So I, this is how um, I would definitely start incorporating into your nightly routine for 20 minutes, less than a half an hour at least. Uh, just fly through these as fast as you can for finding some of the best opportunities in the market. Um, hopefully you learned something from it. Thanks for uh, watching.